Okay, so last lesson we uh, looked at the standard normal distribution. I talked about it in a little bit of detail, so I'll give you the example problem again here so you can see it. We have dog tail lengths are normally distributed with a mean tail length of 38 centimetres, don't be mean to dogs, and standard deviation of 2.9 centimetres. And I asked you to compare the dog tail length of 45 centimetres to a cat tail length of 33 centimetres, with the premise being, the issue being, that because there was a different mean tail length for a cat versus a dog and a different standard deviation of a cat versus a dog, it was a challenge to compare like for like effectively or, or to compare them relatively. And what I did is I introduced this idea of a standardizing process where we look at a normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And if we look at, this is the key thing here, look at a value's relative placement on that standard deviation, sorry, standard normal um, distribution, um, then we can compare like for like. So that's what this diagram here was. We've got a dog with a mean of 38 and the 45 will be up here somewhere. We've got a cat with mean of 30 and 33 is up here somewhere. And if we standard uh, standardise the normal distribution so that we've got uh, a, a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one, then we'll be able to convert these two, uh, sorry, convert these two values into a place on the standard normal de uh, distribution and therefore compare which one is relatively um, higher than the other one. So this one here, whatever this dot is, will be relatively higher than this dot. We don't know what those are yet. That's what the calculations are going to do. So let me go to the next page. Um, and I think this is where we finished off with. Standardised or standard normal distribution curve looks like that, a mean of zero. Um, and because we're adding or subtracting from zero, that means we've got one, two, or three standard deviations away from zero. This is minus one, minus two, minus three standard deviations away from zero as well. Just really quickly, because I felt I was a little, I didn't mean to be, but I felt like I was a tiny bit confusing when I was back here. These, um, these numbers here really should be mu minus, so mean minus standard deviation, mu minus sigma, mu minus two sigma, mu minus three sigma, and similarly mu plus sigma, mu plus two sigma, and mu plus three sigma. So it's mu plus a certain number of standard deviations away. I felt like I was a bit unclear with that. I didn't mean to be. I was just trying to be a bit short -cut and it probably wasn't right to do that. Okay, back to this then. Um, I then sort of expressed the notation there. We use Z to describe a standardised or standard normal distribution. So we say Z is distributed normally with a mean of zero and a variance of one. And it just goes, just, um, it just so happens that if the variance is one, so is the standard deviation, right? Because one squared is one. So the variance is one. Remember, it always goes mu, comma, sigma squared. So zero, comma, one, or zero, comma, one squared would be the same thing. This is for standardized normal. So it's a very specific curve, uh, normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, well, the variance is one squared, so the standard deviation is one. So it's very specific to this. But um, what I sort of alluded to last time was that effectively this standard normal distribution, remembering this is a probability distribution function, is a transformation of these two curves effectively. We would transform them one way to go from dog to standard and we would transform it a different way to go from cat to standard, but we can apply the same process to work out what that is. And that's the calculation here. So this is effectively a set of transformations that get you from the X coordinate of the original value to the Z coordinate of the transform. That's the theory behind it. Um, does anyone have any questions about that before I actually go through the calculation? The theory is harder than the process, but I find if you don't get the theory, you kind of struggle to put the process into place fluently. So I will um, take a moment to take questions. That means one of two things. I'm hoping it's the second thing I'm thinking. You get it. So what, what we do is we are finding the Z value. The Z value is the relative placement. 
Okay, so for the dog, we say, what's the Z value uh, for the dog? Now, the dog's placement in its distribution curve was 45. The dog had a tail length of 45 centimetres, so it's there. The relative place on the uh, standard normal distribution is given by substituting values into the formula. So Z is what we're trying to find out. We know what X is. Oh, man, was it 45? It was like totally three seconds ago I looked at it. Z equals 45 minus... As you can see there, mu, okay, so mu is uh, the mean of the dog distribution, and that was 38. So it's 45 minus 38 all over the standard deviation, which is 2.9. So it's 45 minus 38 all over 2.9. And that, my friends, is just a calculator operation away. So let's see if I can remember for three seconds. 45 minus 38 over 2.9. So we go to the calculator and we just go control divided by to get our fraction going here. We go 45 minus 38 on top and then use my arrow key to go down to the bottom and put 2.9, press enter, and I get 2.414. I'm just writing that onto my screen, then I'll flick back. So the relative position for the dog's tail in the standard distribution is 2.414, okay? And we're going to do the same thing for the cat. Z is equal to the cat's tail length was 33. So that's my X value. So the cat is 33 minus its standard, uh, sorry, its mean, and its mean was... 30, so it's going to be 33 minus 30 all over its standard deviation. And if I can't remember stuff from three seconds ago, I'm not going to be able to remember stuff from yesterday. So let me flick back to where we talked about the cats. They had a standard deviation of 1.2 centimetres. So on the bottom there is 1.2. Whack that into your calculator and see what you get out. 33 minus 30 all over 1.2. The 33 is, hang on, I'll go back and I'll show you. That's the, the tail length of the cat that we were asked to compare. So the 45 and the 33 are the given points or the given x points, the, the given length. And so they're what I substituted in for x here in the formula. So they're the given points. Am I making sense? Yep. And the rest are just the same. Okay. So again, just flicking back to the screen, you can see it's 2.5. So the z value for the dog is 2.414, the Z value for the cat is 2.5, and so I would say that therefore the cat's tail is relatively longer, assuming I've done my calculations correct there. That's basically it. That's how you do it. Yes. So I'm going to stop the video there because that's all I need for this. Um, and then um, what you're going to be doing in class to practice this is these questions here. Exercise 16B, 10, 12, 13. So 10, 12, 13 and 14. Um, and then we're going to move on to exercise 16C straight after.